It won't look bad coming in there. You got everything you need? Yeah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for Father's Day. Amen to all the fathers out there, the wonderful fathers, uh, amen, uh, that are doing it for the village. And we praise God for each and every one of you. Hallelujah. And we just ask you, this is our song. Moving in on me. Yes. I worship you. Worship you. I worship you. Oh, yes. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. Mm, glory. I worship you. Uh huh. You are here, moving in a mist. I worship you. I worship you. Come on. You are here. You are here. Working in this place. place. I, I worship you. I worship you. Come on. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Come on. Touching every heart. Yes. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Healing every heart. Uh huh. I worship you. I worship you. Let mama get in here. You are here. Yeah, we're going. I worship you. I worship you. I need to get over a little bit. You are Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Glory. Hey, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, way of tears. Come on. Men the broken heart. Yeah. The to it all. Jesus. Come on. Yeah. Men the broken heart. Your answer to it all. To it all. Jesus. He's the answer to it all. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Who you are? Yes. Hallelujah. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes. You're here. Touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Yes. Living every night. Yes. I worship you. 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 I
worship you. I worship you. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Bless God. Bless God. Amen. Thank God for each and every one of you that's with us on today. Hallelujah. We give God praise for you. Amen. Uh, truly, I like that scripture says, God is good to Israel and as of such that are of a clean heart. Amen. And truly, God is good to us. Amen. Today is Father's Day. We're going to yes, come a little is. different. You know, uh, we try on Father's Day when we're... In our uh, assembly, we always have had something a little different, and uh, so we're going to do something a little different even on today. Yes. Uh, we just feel that, you know, it's about the body of Christ. It's about ministry and not about this is the way we do things. This is how we do it. So I have a man, First Lady Shaw, here. Hello. And, uh, <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Amen. And... Uh, you know, we are going to, we're talking about a conversation uh, about fathers. Yes. Conversation about fathers. And, you know, since it is Father's Day, uh, I'm going to ask First Lady Shaw, here's a question. And I kind of got this from her sister, amen, uh, Evangelist Turner. I kind of got this from her when I thought about it. I really liked it. And I want to ask Sister Shaw. What kind of childhood did you have with your father? Oh, what boy. kind of man was your father? And, and then we're going to, from there we'll go into, and then we'll get into the scriptures and everything. But, you know, a lot of times when we get people, uh, we've known people for years, we really don't know much about them, you know. But they're a preacher, they're a teacher, uh, they pastor such and such church. But now we're going to find out, what kind of, what was your life growing up? What kind of father did you have? What kind of father did we have? Um, our story is not unique, but uh, it is victorious. And um, um, my mom, when she married my father, uh, she brought my sister and I into the marriage. And... Um, from the very beginning, from the moment uh, we arrived in California, uh, he was our father. He was our, our, our champion. Um, I can truly say that we are blessed from heaven to have uh, him as a father. My father uh, was was always very attentive, very involved um, with us as young ladies. Uh, we also have a brother, and uh, our childhood was was very good uh, as far as our relationship and how our father related to us. Um, he truly was a man, man, the man's man. Uh, he was. Uh, very kind and, and very understanding and my father was not one to uh, to to spank you back in the day when we would spank children oh, that's you know, the problem yeah 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 that's the problem <laughs> no my father wasn't that type of discipl disciplinary he uh, was one to lecture and you almost wish you had got the got spanking the <laughs> because he would lecture and after the lecture, what you would feel is that I disappointed my dad. Mm -hmm. And that compelled us, it compelled me, and I believe my sister and my brother, to, to just want to be better, want to excel to this, this, uh, this place where he always wanted us to be. At, at the end of every discipline, he would be, he would say, um, you, you can be better. You can be better than the situation that that you find yourself in. Mm -hmm. And so I remember. I think I was seven. No, I'm not sure if my brother was born or not at the time. I believe I was seven or eight before my brother was born. My sister was eight or nine, 
And I remember my mom coaching or coaxing my dad or telling my dad when he got home from work that he had to spank us because I can't remember what we did, but we did something in our room. We played and we did something and my mother wanted us to clean up and we didn't. That was back in the day when you got spankings when <laughs> you didn't do what you were supposed to do. And I remember my dad coming in the room, he had the belt in his hand and <laughs> and I don't think he tapped us one time. I think he might have tapped, my sister tapped me and next thing you know, my sister and I were patting him on the back and saying, because he was, he was crying. He was upset because he had to spank us. And he was just not that type of disciplinary. But he would instruct us uh, with, through, his, through his communication. He would, he would instruct us through his love. And um, he was just a very kind uh, type of parent and so um, I really appreciated that my mom was uh, one to to yell my mom was one to I'm going get my flip-flop get my extension cord get my switch but my father was one to okay you are on punishment or this is why did you do that and he would talk uh, mm -hmm. things out and and I guess that was the educator in him uh, so it was a good balance it was a good balance um, he very seldom raised his voice um, uh, very seldom heard a curse word from my yeah. parents yeah. and so we had a real um, uh, kind of a Cosby Brady Bunch type of <laughs> growing up and and so uh, but I really really appreciate my parents because my dad was such an example an example not just for us but I see the type of father my 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 brother is and an example even to uh, you know all of you you know my brother-in-law for you and uh, you know he's he's just a very loving type of person and uh, and maybe that's the principle in him. That's what made him a good administrator. That's what made him a good principal. And people today still talk about him or stop by the house, you know, because he was just that kind. He was just yeah. that kind. And, and, and as I was thinking about what you were saying, now when you relate to God and what attributes in a sense in your father did you see that you see in God. Mm. Um, gosh. As you study the word, yeah. and you say, and you know, a lot of times as we're growing up, we don't understand, you know, a person that is, and especially if you're not really, really church people, yeah. you don't understand a person that has God given uh, uh, traits and things like that. So yeah. now that you've been saved a while, you know, you can look back and say, wow. This right here, you know, this was uh, a way that I was shown the light of knowing the Lord. Yeah, oh, wow. My father was one to, uh, looking back, I can say, he mastered covering his family. He mastered that. He mastered, uh, we were brought up in church. Um, we had all of these kinds of rules. On Sunday, if we didn't go to church, we couldn't play cards, couldn't play checkers, couldn't listen to music, worldly music, until after 12, when church was over. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. So, is that and, you, so, so he made, so to me, you know, that, make, that makes me think that, so he made it where you wanted to go to church, because at least you were out of the house. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> right? But when I look back on it, my father felt that it was... And what he was trying to do, it was his responsibility to put a God consciousness in all of us. Mm -hmm. And in us as children, and as us and us as a family. And and so my father was uh very uh skilled at covering mm -hmm. my sister, myself, my brother, my my mom. And um it it was just remarkable, yeah. And I'm thankful that we still have him. 
today, both my parents. So that's a blessing. I'm going to show you a scripture, and I want you to kind of, you know, she didn't know all this is happening. <laughs> uh, but I want to show her a scripture in the book of Ephesians, and I want her to kind of elaborate on that scripture. Uh, let's see here. Put my glasses on. Uh -huh. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. Uh, We're so glad that you all are joining us on this morning because you, as you as you grow older, you realize that your childhood experiences um, influence your marriage, influence your own family, influence whether you're a single parent or a married couple. It influences that. Whether it was a lack of relationship, whether it was a relationship that was uh, not necessarily birthed, but uh, uh, it was, it was, you were raised by a loving, uh, a loving man, you know, and whether it's biological or whether it is just by here that you are, um, 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 both of those. I'm going to stop right here. Hold on a second. Both of those. That bag and that. Just the flowers. Just the flowers. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Our, gra our grandchildren are leaving out celebrating with their dad on this morning because it is Father's Day. And uh, and that's a that's even a situation, you know. That's even a, a, a unique situation. Whether it is uh, like I was saying, whether you are biological, the father of the household, or whether you are uh, uh, you were loved in through the wife, uh, and or you are you are a part of the village. It is uh, you play an important role. You know, and as a young woman, and as a young lady, and as a little girl, uh, you know, who I am today as a woman reflects my childhood, reflects me as a little girl. So, Amen. Yeah. Those first, first four scriptures? scriptures. Yes. Okay. Six, six chapter of Ephesians 1, 2, 3, and 4. And it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. I love that. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not Amen. Okay. No, I was going to say, so the, the chapter, verse 4, Okay. it says, and you fathers, what do you gather from that? Uh, what is that saying to us, and how do you relate to that with your own, you know, your own upbringing? Yeah, it says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's deep. That's deep. That's a challenge, you know. And, you know, that's why it's line upon line, precept upon precept. And I can't remember which, I can't recall which scripture it is, but I know it's in the book of Peter. And it talks about, how if a man does not love himself, it is impossible for him to love his wife. And that's a scripture that relates to the esteem of the man. If a man does not love himself, does not understand who he is, then what can he give to his children? What can he give to his relationship? What can he give to his wife? What can he give to his girlfriend? What can he give to his mother? What can he give to his siblings? And so it is an esteem issue. And here it talks about fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. And many situations we can, um, we can count that. All types of scenarios. 
you know, as your children are growing up and they are go coming out of adolescent and into teenagehood, they, especially a young man and a young lady, they are going to challenge, as teenagers, they are going to challenge their parents. Mm -hmm. They're going to rise up <laughs> one day, any given situation, whether they raise their voices like they've never before, never had before, or whether they make statement, make a statement to you like, uh, did you, are you talking to me? You know, are you forgetting that I'm your mother? So you're going to have an experience where your children are going to rise up against you. And it's, it's very important that the father does not uh, uh, create situations where he's provoking his children. <laughs> that's, that's really interesting you say that because, you know, that makes me think about, right. it makes me think about when, when the, the Jesus and his family, when they had went to Jerusalem and they, they uh, thought him to be amongst his relatives, yes. but he wasn't there and they went back and found him. And and he said, "Wish ye not that I must be about, about my, my father's, father's business. business." Now, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, mainly your fathers, talking about provoke not your children to wrath. Can you imagine now? You've been looking now. It's been three days. You're looking for your child, yes. and you find your child in the temple and everything. And they say to you, "Don't you understand that I must be about my father's business?" Now, of course, in the spiritual, we look at that and say, well, yes, eh, yeah, yes. well, you know, no problem. Sure. We know you the Messiah and all that. But in the natural, you know, uh, I can see Joseph saying, you wait till we can get home. Oh. <laughs> oh, let me tell you something right here. And maybe that's why Jesus' life was real quiet <laughs> between that time and the time that, you know, of the wedding until he was a young adult, yeah. I should say, you yeah. know. And, you know, we, you know, there's all different types of, of theories on that. But uh, just imagine, you know, imagine uh, having a child uh, that, you know, we all have one. We all have one, one kid. That is going to, uh, uh, they don't care what you do, how you do. They don't care what type of discipline you uh, are going to put down. You always have one child that's going to challenge you, mm -hmm. you know. And if you have one child, you're going to have moments when that one child is going to challenge you. And so it's very important, this scripture points it out. How a father doesn't provoke your children to wrath. The father establishes identity in the household. The father has the power and the responsibility. I should say the responsibility. And also, uh, uh, when I say power, I'll say the position to... Uh, uh, to promote positive esteem in their daughters and in their sons. They have a unique role to play. And you hear and you see it on social media all the time and you, you hear people all the time on television and on the radio stations and you have these fraternities that are mentor programs. Uh, uh, you have all different types of companies that that create mentor programs out of the companies because they see the need in the community. It is the duty of and the responsibility and the mantle of the father to establish the identity of their family, the identity of their children. It's like a mark. You, you mark, you know, it's like a brand. You brand that. We are a part of God's family, and we've been branded. And the same thing, just like that's why marriage is likened unto the church, you know. And in many cases, along with marriage comes children. And so you are branded. The father has that responsibility, has that anointing on him, if I want to get spiritual mm -hmm. about it, that anointing to Say brand yes. his, his sons, yes. to brand 
his his daughters. Yeah. I mean, look at Eli. He was a a, a high. He was a priest, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. High priest. Mm -hmm. Okay. And look at the responsibility that he had. Look at also the insight and the gifts that he had. But Eli also wasn't such a good parent. Wow. He, 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 he was instrumental in caring for Samuel. Imagine. Mm -hmm. He was instrumental in, in uh, uh, I should say, one of Samuel's first, it might have been Samuel's first encounter when he kept hearing a voice. And he went to and he went to Eli and said, "Did you call me?" Mm -hmm. And he said, "No, no." And then he heard the voice again, "Did you call me?" And he said, "No, I didn't call you." And then he turned to, to Samuel and said, "The next time you hear this voice, you know, then you know we, it is the Lord that is that is speaking to you." And so he pretty much established uh, uh, Samuel's uh, ministry. You know, and but along the line, his sons were acting up, cutting up, committing sin, committing all types of things that were against God right there under his nose, yeah. right there in the temple. Even though he was a mentor to Samuel, he knew that when Hannah dropped Samuel off at the at the temple, what the vow that Hannah had made to God, and he knew what Samuel's purpose was. And so he wasn't a terrible person, and at one time, he was a pretty good dad. But along the way, he began to not stand watch. He began to not, to not instruct. Even when one of the questions this morning was, as a leader, how do you instruct? as a pastor, as our shepherd, as a role as a father, a spiritual father and a and as a spiritual father, what what is the tone that one should take when you are instructing God's sheep? And 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 pastor elaborated and said that my tactic is to instruct with with love and so not as to not hurt the person. And so Eli's responsibility was to instruct in love, and he didn't, and he didn't, and so the the it's so important to not provoke our children. We have fathers to not provoke the children to wrath. You know, we have so many examples from David to you know everyone has a story. You know, everyone has a story in the Bible, and it's here so that we can learn from it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, when you were talking, it made me think of uh, being a father, of course, as we're dealing with Father's Day and talking about the conversation about fathers. One thing is a father must be a man of his word. Yes. Even, there's a scripture that says that you swear to your own hurt. Now, that's tough. But because you have to be a man of your word, it made me think about the story in the book of Judges about Jephthah. If you've never read that story, mm. you need to read it. Oh, man. Because Jephthah asked the Lord. He said, look. He said, Lord, he's one of the judges, just mm -hmm. like Samson and just like Gideon. And he asked the Lord. He said, Lord, if you'll give me the victory, he said, the first thing that comes out of my house when I return, I will offer unto you as a sacrifice. Yes, he did. And then, so God gave him the victory. And, of course, he's, you know, coming home. He's all excited and everything. And the first thing that came out of his house was his daughter. Hmm. Now, immediately as a man, as a woman, as a person, you could say, well, Lord, you know, I was talking about oxen. I was talking about, you know, uh, turtle doves. I was talking about, you know, I'm not going to sacrifice my daughter. No. You know, that's different. You know, you know how, I mean, the scripture talks about when you do a vow, he says, be sure that you pay it. But Jephthah was such a man of God that when she came out, she ran out and she looked at his countenance and she said, Father, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. And when he told her, Amen. What was on his mind and what he had vowed to the Lord. She said, let it be as you have vowed to the Lord. Just give me a year. 
And, you know, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. But he kept his word to the Lord. And, you know, it, it just a person of their word. A man, a father must be a person of their word. One thing I did deal with, and my wife knows I've told her, mm -hmm. and so I'm really ad, you know, adamant about when I say things, I try. You're not always, we're not perfect, we're not always, you know, 100%. Uh, I know we write that after people's, uh, uh, you know, on people's pages and all that kind of stuff, 100%. But we're not always 100%. No. And that's understandable. We're not perfect. He said, let us go on to perfection. Yes. And that's what we're trying to do. Uh, that's what we're doing, not trying to do, we're doing in Christ Jesus. But my father, amen, my, my, my birth father, my natural father, Amen. Because of some issues that he had, amen, when I was young, he would say to me many times, he would say that I'm going to come and I'm going to pick you up or I'm going to come and I'm going to uh, bring you something. You know, he'd ask me, what do you want? And I'd say, well, a race car set and this, that and the other, mm -hmm. you know, and he, you know, would say, well, okay, I'll be there Thursday, I'll be there Friday, whatever. And a lot of times he didn't show at all. And I wouldn't see him till maybe a year from then. And uh, so, but what it did to me was it put in me that I didn't want my children to feel what I felt. If I told them something I wanted, and not only my children, but really anybody I told that I was going to do something, I was going to do it, amen, with everything I had, I was going to try to bring that to pass. Now, that's where I get to the 100%. It's not always possible. You can promise something, amen, and you're not able to bring it to pass, you know, but I always tried 100% to bring it to pass because I knew the feeling of someone, and especially someone you love, your own father telling you, and I'm not talking about, you know, a kid sitting at home, yeah, daddy, I want so-and-so and so-and-so. I'm talking about your father, you know, gets you intimately involved in what he's saying to you, and he's saying to you, I'm going to bring you this, or I'm going to, or not even the bringing of things. It was, I'm going to come, and we're going to do this together. You know, you wanted to spend time. Uh, I can actually really... Uh, on my two hands, two hands, I can put together on my two hands uh, times that my father and I were together. I don't even think it was ten times, and he, uh, he passed when I was eight. So I don't think it was even ten times in my eight years that we spent time together. And he knew where I lived. You know, he, he, he didn't, you know, we lived in the same place since I was two years old. We never moved, so it was not like he didn't know where we were. He had his own issues. But what I'm saying is what it put in me was make it happen. Don't let your child go through what you went through. Hallelujah. And so, and that I believe is a characteristic of God because God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he spoken? And shall he not make it good? God is always a man of his word. Yes. God speaks, amen, and he, he and, and Jeremiah said, he hastens his word to perform it. Yes. Hallelujah. And that means God said it, he's going to do it. And I think as close as we can be to that, as men, amen, as fathers, we ought to be. We can't be perfect, we're not perfect, but... Hallelujah, as close as we can get. If I tell you I'm bringing a tricycle home, I'm going to try as, as best I can to bring it. to bring that tricycle yeah. or either bring two two wheels and say, I couldn't get the other one from the dog. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But I'm just saying is that, so that's something that, that, that as it says, the scripture talks about provoking not your children to wrath. See, that could have affected me a different way because we know, we see the stories, we see the gang stories, we see the prison stories, we see the fact that, you know, fathers uh, did certain things that provoked their children, they became alcoholics, they became drug addicts, they became incarcerated, all of these kind of things because lack of a father, not having a father, or having a bad example, 
example as a father. We have seen all these kind of things. So as we look at provoke not your children to wrath, hallelujah, as a father, you always want to try to be a person of your word, a person of your word to your children, a person of your word to your wife, Amen. A person of your word in your job, in your career, amen, in your occupation, you want to be a person of your word. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us that that's the way we should be. Have we not one, one father, have not one God created us all? Amen. And that we are created in the image of God. Yes. So if we're created in the image of God, it says, God, listen about my wife brought up Samuel. Don't start nothing. Now. Oh, yes, my, wife, my wife brought up Samuel. The scripture in the book of First uh, Samuel says that Samuel was such a man of his word. Hallelujah. Samuel was such a prophet that it said God did let none of his words fall to the ground. Yes. That means everything Samuel prophesied. Aside, it happened. It happened. Everything, amen, that he spoke happened. He was so anointed, but that come back to integrity, came back to who he was in God. Yes. He was a man of his word. Now, my wife didn't mention Samuel had some issues with his children. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It wasn't only Eli. No. Eli did too, but Samuel didn't order his children. Oh, what I want you to understand, children of God, and then I'm going to let Sister Shaw go again. I want you to understand this. Some people are good in one area, and they have to do a lot of work in the other. Yes. Some people are great pastors, but they're not good fathers. Some people are good preachers, but they're not good pastors. So, I mean, I'm just talking about the gamut of things. Uh, I just told you that Sam, Samuel was a man that God did let none of his words fall to the ground, but he wasn't the greatest of fathers. Look at David. David, amen. David was a good father, but he had some issues sometime too. He had one son, Amnon, uh, raped his daughter. Yes. Uh, his daughter, his only daughter, Amnon raped her. Then her brother, killed Amnon, this is her her brother, which is his half-brother, killed Amnon, then he had Absalom, which took over the kingdom, put him out. See, all this is, is, is fatherhood Yes. at the test. But see, the problem was that David, when he committed adultery, the Lord told him, said, the sword shall not depart from your house. You know, murder. Yeah, murder. you know, after yeah, after he committed, uh, you know, he committed murder. He committed adultery. He said, "The sword shall not depart from your house." And so after that, he said, "You know, I mean, he had issues with his children, and you know, and see, once you get in that kind of predicament, and if your children are not saved, not humble, not godlike, your children can bring stuff in your face and put it in your face." Provoke not your children to wrath because they can say, what are you talking about? You know, when you tell them, say, look, that little, you know, like my pastor, you say, that little fast tail girl, you need to leave her alone. Oh, yeah. And then when, you know, you, your son or daughter can look back at you and say, what are you talking about? You got two or three on the side or whatever. Now, when that, see that, it means that you have not done the right thing. So with David, when his son, his son slept with his mistresses and God told him that's what was going to happen because David could not stand up to him in a sense because of what he had done. So his son felt like, well, you did it. So I can do so it. So I can do it too. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very important. And like I say, we're not 100% not a man uh, uh, anything. We're striving to be the best. We're striving to be like God. We're striving to be men of God. Amen. But, you know, you don't want, amen, where your children can rise up and say to you, well, you did so and so. Amen. But even if they do. You got to let them know there is a forgiving God. Yes, I did it, and I made a mistake. I was wrong by doing it, but I don't want you to make the same mistake. Hallelujah, yes. hallelujah, yes. amen. So yes. she opened up a Pandora's box when she said, I talked about Eli, yes. and I just had to jump <laughs> on that because it, it's, in, it's interesting 
throughout the Bible. I love the Bible because it doesn't hide folks. No, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't hide folks. It lets you know Abraham lied. Yeah. You know. Now, some people could say, well, it was a white lie. Because really, Sarah was his sister. Half-sister. You know. Uh, they had, you know. But uh, that wasn't his heart's know, intent. But that's not what he meant. No. no you no. know. And uh, so, amen, 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 amen. I tell you. But you no. always say, Pastor always says, put flesh and blood. On, on the Bible. On the Bible. Yes. And I want to talk, uh, I guess it's the social worker and the therapist in me, I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, what it is to be a, a man, to be a father. I'm not a man, but when I look at... Uh, <laughs> I, when Thank you were God she's not When a man. you were talking about the story of David, and when Samuel came to the house... And ask uh, David's father, uh, you know, present your sons. And, you know, I want to meet your sons. And the father was so excited. He brought all the sons in. He said, well, not none of these boys are anointed to be king. Are you sure this is all your sons? His thought process didn't even land on David. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he wasn't thinking about David. And... All throughout David's story in the Bible, you see that David had issues in the flesh. David had esteem issues about who he was and who he was as a man. And anytime you got, how many, 700? 700 wives? Didn't he have 700? Well, that was Solomon. That was Solomon. How many yeah. wives did David have? David Three. had about seven. Thought seven too, right? Yeah. That's what I thought. Anytime you have seven hundred wives and some That's so Oh. Who did David? David had three hundred. No. No, that's no David had like seven. Oh seven. Okay. <laughs> okay. But his son. His son did. That's right. That's right. <laughs> learned it from his father. Yeah. He learned it from his learned father. That, that behavior. Yeah, that type of behavior from his father. That's that that's my point. And that is no matter what, whether you've, you've learned from a mentor or learned from your biological father, the lack thereof, you learned something. Whether your father was present in the home or whether he was, he was not present. But I want to encourage you on today. Not only encourage you, but I want to catapult you into becoming and being when this broadcast ends, the best of the best man that you've ever been. Mm -hmm. That it is not uh, too late to be a different type of man. You don't have to be afraid to be a different type of man. You don't have to be reluctant. Or afraid to go to your children and said you and say to them, you know what, I wasn't, I wasn't such a good dad. There were ways when there were times when I could have been better, and I want to apologize, and you for that. And you have no idea when you say that to your child. The mo the in that moment, the release and the freedom and the chains and that seed of unforgiveness that they even had in their heart toward you, toward life, toward their own situation. That as a father, if you feel that somehow you played a part in your child's uh, uh, future, whether they're not following the right path or whether the path that they're on is not so great, you still have time to go back and say, to go to them and say, I'm sorry. I didn't have it. I didn't do so well. I wish I would have had it a little different and I could have offered you a little bit more. But now that I know a little bit more, I know better, I want you to be better. I might not have been able to give it to you, but just know that God can because he's changing me. 
And so I want to encourage you to be that. That as long as we're living and breathing, we have the opportunity right now to be better. Yeah. Yeah. To change. And don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of that. At all. Yeah. And I, and I think one thing that goes with that is what we talked about at the very beginning, and that is going back to mentors. Yes. Mentors. If they're ever, like my wife was saying, there's mentors in companies. We have mentors in our business. You yes. know, there's mentors in companies. There's mentors in fraternities. In, 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 uh, in what? Fraternities. Fraternities, all kind of. Yeah. Uh, uh, everywhere you go, they talk about mentoring, mentoring. Then, well, there definitely should be mentoring in the church. We were the first mentors. When you look at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all these people that God chose, they were mentored. Amen. A lot of people don't understand the book of uh, Genesis and don't understand that one thing that really fired me up about Genesis when I was reading it is did, after doing a little research, I remembered, uh, not remembered, I, I, I found out that when Abraham was alive, uh, Shem, the son of Noah, was still alive. Mm -hmm. Now, he was an eyewitness yeah. to the destruction of the antediluvian world which was the world before Noah, mm -hmm. or a world during Noah's time. So not only, amen, was there word, uh, uh, you know, people writing down or whatever the word, but you had an eyewitness, eyewitness which was Shem. Shem, the Bible, when you look at after the flood, it'll tell you that Shem lived like 500 years after the flood. You know, and during that time, if you look at the generations and the genealogy, how it goes, Abraham was born. Yes. So therefore, and he is a a a, a ancestor of Abraham. Yes. So when you have a man, a person like Shem sitting there with his little babies on his knees and his his younger generation that is sitting around while he's telling them about the ark. A man about his dad Noah, about his brothers uh, Japheth and and uh, 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 oh God, I can't think of his name. Uh, whatever the other son's name was, uh, Ham. Ham. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Ham. Ham. You know, Ham. and he's sitting there telling you about this. So there's a mentoring process going on. Hallelujah, there's a mentoring. So even when they got to uh, uh, where Joseph was sold into slavery, blah, 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 when they got to Egypt and found out about Joseph and everything, the mentoring began again because now he saved their lives alone. Amen. They have now, 70 of them have moved into Egypt, and the mentoring goes on. So what I'm saying is the church was the first mentors. And what happened to me was when I got in church, now, like I said, I had my dad and I had my uncle, which was my dad, who raised me. Amen. But when I got in church, I had deacons that, that we had grown to, to love one another. I had deacons, and it was more than preachers. You know, it was mainly deacons that took me under their wing. You know, even knowing I was in the ministry, not like, you know, I'm going to be bigger than you or whatever, but they would nurture us and they would pour into us, you know, and uh, one of them, of course, was Deacon Leroy Kenner, amen, Deacon Edwards to a, to a point too, but Deacon Kenner and his wife, I mean, they would invite us over and things like that. They were mentoring us. They were pouring into us. You know, we have to do that today. Fathers, We have to mentor our children, and sometimes you have to mentor uh, their friends. Mm -hmm. You have to mentor their, you know, people they hang around and stuff like that, because sometimes they don't have fathers. Yes. You know, I found that over my life many times, you know, different people as I was youth president, things like that. I mentored a lot of different people. I And one thing I had, and I would say this, that I don't want to ever hear it, uh, and I don't, you, I don't want you to ever deal with this, is that I would have people come in my office at Greater Bethany, amen, young people, and they and they would talk to me about their situations and blah, blah, blah. And I would say, well, you know what? Your mom's an evangelist, you know, and you ought to be able to. And they say, oh, you don't know my mother. You know my mother here, but you don't know my mother at home. Hmm. You know my father here, Deacon Joe, Joe, you know, whatever. You know him here, but you don't know them at home. So many times, and I never would tell anybody anything like that. I never would say that. 
to the person I would just continue to mentor and continue to move on. And then a lot of people, like I said, a lot of relatives of your your, your family don't have mentors. Mm. You know, that would happen with the, you know, my daughters played uh, basketball, you know, and all their little friends, you know, and everything. You know, a lot of them didn't have fathers in the house, you know, and things like that. And Mr. Shaw, Mr. Shaw, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and that's just the way life is, you know. They became because, a part of the village. Yeah, yeah, they became a part of the village. That's why I put on that father figure. Sometimes it's just a father figure. And sometimes, brothers, you don't even know you're a father figure. Sometimes people watch you afar off. They are far off looking at you, looking at your life, and they're gleaning from you. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know it. That's why you have to walk with your godlike character and walk, amen, tall as a man and know that you are a man, amen. One thing they said about my pastor, he may not have been right in every area, but when he passed away and they talked about him, they said one thing about Bishop Robert W. McMurray, he was a man's man. If he didn't agree, you knew it. Hallelujah. Didn't matter. He wasn't going to hate you. He was, you know, but he would tell you, I don't agree with that. You know, and all I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, amen, and men especially, is that a lot was said today. We hope you glean from it. We hope you get, we all want to do better. We all want to be better. Amen. We all want to do the will of God. If that's what you want to do and you have that heart, amen, that pumps, amen, and that, 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 that seeks the Lord, you're going to be all right. Hallelujah. I have a closing scripture, and it's Psalms 103. And we're going to start at verse, uh, verse 2. Bless and affectionately mm -hmm. praise the Lord, O oh my soul. And do not forget any of his benefits, who forgive all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you lavishly with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the soaring eagle. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. And he made known his ways of righteousness and justice to Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in compassion and loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has dealt with us according to our sins, nor reward us with, with punishment according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high upon the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear and worship him with awe, full, filled respect and deepest reverence. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father loves his children, so the Lord loves those who fear and worship him. May God bless you on today. We want you to be encouraged. We want you to know that we appreciate you as men. We appreciate you as individuals, as the man in our community, the man in our households. We honor you on today. We honor and we love you on today. And we see the best in you. And know that God sees everything that you are supposed to be. He sees the best. And so we see the best in you also. God bless you. We love you. Enjoy your Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, yes. everyone. Yes. God yes. bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. See you on Wednesday night. Enjoy your day, all you fathers. Take it easy. Watch a good movie. Whatever it is you do today, just enjoy yourself. May God richly bless you is our prayer. Yes, it is.